What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yo, truly one and only Paul Pico, host of the Paul Pico podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I want to react to this interesting video, very interesting video about criminal gangs using Spotify to launder money. I could pretty much assume and guess how they're doing it, but you know, we want to get all the details for show. But before we do that, I'm going to give you a word from promopalace.biz. The marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. You heard a beautiful lady. If you need online marketing promotions for your music, product, brand, or service, please go to promopalace.biz. Get 15% off music promo from palace.biz. Use coupon code Labor Day 2023. All right, let's get into it. How criminal gangs are using Spotify to launder money. As a music promo guy, this is very interesting. I, I pretty much think I know how they're doing it, but we're about to see. Not just hurting the labels and Spotify, it's hurting artists as well. So we're about to talk about how they do it and how they're using hip hop to make it happen. Let's check it out. All right, bro, it says Swedish criminal gangs use fake and in America too. But let's, this is actually pretty interesting because these are like gang gangs. Yeah. This is organized crime. Criminal gangs behind a rise in bombings and shootings in wow. Sweden in recent years are using fake Spotify streams to launder money, a Swedish newspaper reported on Tuesday. And you want to know how they know? How they know? Snitches. Like from the gang? <laughs> from the gang. Damn. About four of them. The police investigations have confirmed it as well, but they said there's been four dudes who like straight up said, yeah, that's what we're doing. Must not be happy with that, that .004. <laughs> <laughs> Should they break it down even? <laughs> <laughs> right, the Spotify streams, they <laughs> Shit, ain't as clean cut as they thought it was going to be. Like, what? Hey, that's, that's a fact. They, they get the artist struggle. It's like, dang, man, we only getting this much back for Now it's like, oh, I guess I could get more money being a snitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> One guy said, I can say with 100% certainty that this goes on. I have been involved in it myself. Mm. Straight up, All right? right. Now, this is the crazy part about it. So we're talking about drug deals, robberies, fraud, contract killings, and we're talking about bombing. So again, this is the official, official stuff. And the way they're doing it is they're taking Bitcoin, so they're converting that money into Bitcoin, and then they're paying the people who do bots for their Spotify streams. Damn. Okay, so I get what they're doing. They're basically, they're taking the drug money and they're buying Bitcoin. And they're taking that Bitcoin and they're buying Spotify streams, bot streams. And you can get bot streams as low as 38 cents, 48 cents for a thousand. Every thousand is four dollars. So, yeah, man. Um, The only problem with that is, is if they get so aggressive with it and Spotify catches on, they'll just remove the songs and they won't get the payouts. So they got to be smart about it. Like, that's the thing. Like, when an unsigned artist starts getting a shit ton of plays and doesn't have no followers, he got no... They got no traction outside of Spotify, no YouTube traction, no TikTok, no Instagram, no Facebook, none of that. And and nobody really knows them. They're just getting a 
ton of plays out of nowhere on Spotify, they're going to catch on to that. They're going to flag that. But if they're doing it right, because I think I've seen a video where this guy that got locked up, not for Spotify streaming, he got locked up for something else, I think it was. He said he was botting 6,000 plays per day per song. And he was saying that's really the max out. So if he had 10 songs, we'll say he had 10 songs, 10 songs, 60,000 plays per day, uh, you figure it's four dollars per thousand, so that's sixty times four dollars. So he was getting about what two hundred and forty dollars a day. Once you multiply that um, times thirty days, I mean, you look at that. Six thousand, uh, seventy five hundred dollars a month off of bot streams. That pays a lot of people's bills. And this is the thing, though. I think he was doing it on way more than ten songs. I think it was like a bunch of songs. So if they're doing it the the right, that's the thing. Even when you bot stuff, there's a right way and a wrong way to bot. It doesn't matter what you do in life. There's a right way and a wrong way. You know, even the bot guys, they do, they get to where they do things wrong because they get greedy and they get aggressive and they're unsigned, unknown artists that nobody knows getting all this traffic out of nowhere, which draws red flags. And it's not translating over to followers, saves, other playlist ads, anything of that nature. Man, it's like, it's like I want to be morally sound and and hate it, but it's just kind of genius. I ain't going to lie. I mean, it's right. It's a <laughs> play that's right there. As far as money laundering, it is kind of genius. You know, it really in front of you. Yeah, it's, 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 like. it's very simple because the music industry traditionally has been used to launder money anyway. Yeah, like throughout right? history. Yeah, it's just a new way, easier way to do it, and and faster. And, and faster. Yeah. All right. Don't have to leave your house. Yep. You know and what I'm saying? Convince this nigga to go outside. <laughs> And these are real artists, by the way. Okay, I was just about to ask that. Like, real, so, the, the you. Okay, so the real artists, that's the thing. They're, and, but still, this still applies. The real artists, they're botting it up. The artists apparently are okay with it because I guess they're getting a cut. Maybe the artists are under the impression that the plays are real. I don't know. I mean, because it's a game. You know, if the artists are actually aware, aware. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. So <laughs> that part, I don't know. know. The, this is the thing, though. We've seen this plenty of times. I mean, especially, you know, in the U.S., we got a lot of gangs that fun music, fun music careers, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's nothing. A lot of drug dealers as well, too. A lot of drug dealers have launched music careers. Um, gangs, I don't... Gangs are more extorting music careers than they're funding them. New, you know there's a lot of artists that ha- are attached to gangs. And in this particular case, I've it reminds me of the artists that I've seen on Instagram. Have you ever seen these guys where it's a lot of money on the page, right? Mm-hmm. But you're just like, okay, this could be like a fake digital marketer type money. Like, oh, they're just paying for stuff. They really don't have this money. But then you see enough of the scroll. And you're like, no, nah, this guy got money. Yeah, it's real. Like real. There's <laughs> money coming from somewhere. <laughs> All right, this ain't just the I rented this, I rented this. This is real money. The streams ain't that great. Or the streams are great, but the music is trash. So mm-hmm. you still know, like, All right, this ain't really coming from there. And that's the situations where I feel like these artists don't know. It's like when you have an organization funding a lifestyle, so you are living good, right? They probably own clubs and things like that. So there's always going to be a look for you when you go to the club. They know how to make the club move and give you a certain level of attention. But the artist might not know some of this level of attention is just from out of respect from the game. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not all yeah. love for me. 
<laughs> and then yeah. on the back end, they boosted my streams, and I don't know. So I'm living in this entire bubble where I think I am the man. I think I'm popping, but these guys are really funny. An entire lifestyle. I'm living in a damn bubble. I'm what's you know, it's not even just that. This is the problem. I'm a music promoter. I never push Spotify first. Spotify is one of the last things that it's coming out my mouth to try to tell you to put your money into. Like if you're a real music promo guy, you'd be pushing YouTube and TikTok first and foremost, and then Instagram and Facebook and things of that nature. But you'd be YouTube and TikTok. That's what you would be pushing. And so when you're an artist that's always concerned more about Spotify than anything else, like, and I deal with musicians, that's all they really care about is Spotify this, Spotify that. The problem is Spotify isn't breaking new artists. You as an independent artist really can't break yourself on Spotify because Spotify doesn't allow for engagement with your songs directly on Spotify. The problem with Spotify is, you know, they got to implement one feature and then you can, then it'd be totally different. If they allow people to comment on songs and people to reply to those comments, then you got something. But Spotify doesn't allow for engagement on the songs. All you can do is click a like. That's not engagement. If you can't comment on it and give your feedback, it, It's just too limited. And the problem with Spotify is you got Spotify's playlist. You got the record label playlist. And record labels are botting up. Record labels, you know, Spotify playlist up here. Record label playlist below Spotify. And record labels are botting up their playlist. If you think theirs are all organic or that's horse shit. And then once you get down to the independents, a lot of them have the bot because Playlisters have no influence. They have no influence. And it's hard to have an influence when nobody can comment on your content. Playlisters have no influence. They're not influencers. They are curators. They are different. If they had influence, curators would be considered influencers. But they're not. They are considered curators. That movie, oh, that Jim Carrey movie. Bubble Boy. No, is that a movie? That's yeah. a real movie. Yeah, it's a real movie. Bubble Boy, and it's a Jim Carrey movie. I don't know if it's Jim Carrey. Yet, okay, it's a real movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the movie where he was um uh, like living in a fake life, and they set up the whole neighborhood. Oh man, whatever. Somebody will know it in the comments. It's it's a it's a pretty known movie, right? All right, so I want to give a reminder that being independent is not just about not being signed to a label. It's actually making money without being signed to a label, being able to have a sustainable career. And for those of y'all who actually want to be able to make money from your fan base, you're serious about figuring out how to monetize. I have a free video that you can check out. I don't need your email. I don't need your phone number. I don't need any information. All you have to do is go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. And I'm going to show you the lies that artists have been told that have been keeping them, probably you too, from monetizing your fan base and how shifting that perspective has allowed one artist we're working with to be on track to make over $500,000 this year. See what he's talking about? He's talking about fan based and monetizing it thing about spotify yes your music is monetized on there but you can't build the fan base without youtube without tiktok without instagram without facebook without one of these other platforms and spotify it's you're at risk at for bots almost you know seven eight times out of ten you know, unless you're getting on Spotify's playlist. And guess what? Spotify's not adding everybody to their playlist. And once they do, they're not going to add you to the top playlist. They're going to add you to the mediocre ones. Only going to get about 10, 20,000 listeners. And they're going to drop you after a few days or a week. They're not even going to give you the whole 30-day experience. 
This is a different era. Don't fall for that trap saying artists can't make money. Artists do not have to be broke. So if you want to escape that trap, go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You do have to make sure you put the www in the beginning when you type it in your URL and watch this free video again. You're not going to be asked to put in your email. You're not going to be asked for your phone number, but it won't be up forever. Check it out. Hip hop accounts for most streams, fake streams, by the way. I believe it. So they are using hip hop to do it. One guy. And why is that? <laughs> Partially is because out of a hundred thousand songs per day, eighty percent of them are rap songs. And also, hip hop is always ahead of the curve when it comes to things. What's the biggest playlist on Spotify? Rap caviar. What were the biggest hip playlists? I mean, the biggest blogs. You know, they were all hip hop at first. A lot hip hop is always ahead of the curve with a lot of these things. You know, who blew up on TikTok first? A slap rapper kind of cat, little Nas X spitting his little rap. Um, yeah, like rap dudes and hip hop dudes are really ahead of the curve on a lot of things in the internet. Who blew up on SoundCloud? Who's blowing up on Audio, Audio Mac? You know? Yeah, man. I mean, when 80% of the music being released, accounted for, is rap and hip-hop, yes, I would argue that rap and hip-hop is doing most of the botting as well. I said, since 2019, that's when they really started using hip hop because in Sweden in particular, it started to win awards. It started to get a lot of attention and take off over in Sweden. So, And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Spotify a Swedish company? So they've been using hip hop especially, but to hip hop's credit, it is also the most consumed on digital platforms. Well, that's only because once again, 80% of 100,000 songs are rap and hip hop songs. It's also the most oversaturated genre as well. So, yes, they account for 84.5% of fake streams reported on music business worldwide. Which is, how, is pretty much the exact amount of... Um, that they account for music released on daily. It makes a lot Damn, of sense. That's a huge percentage. That's crazy. But at the same time, Damn, that I makes, mean, that it makes so many things make sense. It's the most. It's the most consumed though. So it's like, uh, like our, our. And you know what? I didn't actually know that it counted for eighty four percent of the bot streams. But that makes sense because it counts for eighty percent of the music being released on a daily. It's not so much pop or Afro beats or country or rock or any of these other genres that are oversaturated because they only make up 20%. People saying I need to use hip hop just because that's what's most likely going to consume. Are they using fake or are they <sighs> signing fake or I mean hip hop artists because they know that's the best type of music and then they do fake streams. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I would argue that the oversaturation is why it, it is being bothered so much. It, it's it's so much harder to get organic plays and to get real plays in hip hop and rap when literally it accounts for eighty percent of the music being released. Like it ain't like a pop artists are swimming in a sea of oversaturation or Afro beats or country. It's just rap and hip hop that are swimming in a sea of oversaturation. So how much, I mean, algorithms isn't going to trigger all these artists' names when it counts for 80% and a lot of unknown and never heard of. Yeah. I, guess I don't blame it on hip hop. It just happens to be the most streamed and people are using what makes sense. And it's easier to hide within what's most streamed probably yeah. as well. Exactly. I think it's, most stream, lowest barrier to entry than you know most yes. other music genres. Yes. And I don't know if they thought this far ahead, but it's like, oh, if we get Yeah, and let's throw that in. Lowest barrier of entry, meaning 
you don't got to make good or great music. Oh, this shit might actually boost the credibility because that genre respects things like that. You know what I'm saying? As that sad is, as it is to say, bro, like, yes. you know, sad as it is. No, it doesn't build the credibility that hip hop and rap is being bodied 84% of all genres. What it says is. It says the music is not that great or good, so they have to buy it. It says it's, it's totally oversaturated, so they have to buy it. And what does it say? What does that say for the record labels? If eighty four percent of the bot streams are rap and hip hop, what does that say about it? I mean, it says it's also misrepresented misrepresentate uh represented the the amount of fans that are uh, truly listen is embellished and over exaggerated the interest for hip hop is not exactly what they're saying it is if it's the most bodied genre out of all the genres that I mean that's crazy. I didn't even know that stat. I just knew 80% of the music being released was rap and hip hop. I didn't know it made up and accounted for 84% of bot streams. It is to say if they got like we talking about it right now because they got cause they got caught. That, 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 <laughs> that is the twisted world that uh the hip hop <laughs> lives in. And by the way, that just to, for conversions, they're saying that they've amassed millions of streams and a million streams in Sweden pays about 40,000 to 60,000 kronor. Oh, okay. Now that <laughs> converts similar to America because it's about 30. And that's another thing. They could take that money and convert it to American dollars or some other kind. They could some other currency that's less valuable and get more dollars in that currency. Like, if they say they say it's like, a, well, they're in Sweden, but say it was like a Mexican drug cartel and they had it set up in Sweden, they could convert those Sweden dollars into Mexican dollars and get way more Mexican dollars. 500 to $5,300 okay. per million streams. So it's in a similar range. I know some countries convert a little differently, but... With that being said, they said they have seen a boost in organic streams because of their bots. Yeah, I mean. And you're going to eventually. You're going to eventually. Because when you start searching the algorithms, the artists with the most followers, the playlists with the most followers, they're going to show up at the top of the list. And the most plays, all that's going to you know, kick in. But the fact that this is a, a news story, it's probably not going to go on but so long. You know, we had the whole bot episode we talked about. I know. You know, it, it can it can lead you to the promised land in, in, in small, specific situations. Yeah, but this is the thing. Botting was designed for that, to give you a boost and then some organic later. But if you don't actually have good or good or great music it might not necessarily work if you or you, there's something about you that doesn't stand out amongst the rest because you still got to stand out still got to stand out questions in specific and if you don't really care for real for real anyway you just really trying to launder that money a little a couple of organic streams is just an add-on. But see, that's when I would start to get scared if I was in. I'd be like, oh shit, they starting to build a real fan base. So it means there's gonna be real people paying attention to this operation that could mm. bring this whole thing. That's when I would get nervous. They ain't trying was, to knock off the artists? Uh, I mean, maybe And you know, if they're like a gang culture artist, they could build a fan base organically once people start algorithm the algorithms start kicking in and they algorithmically search through spotify and they start popping up because they got up because they're probably botting the followers the play they're probably botting you know multiple aspects 
Not knock them off, but like, I'd be like, yo, I ain't saying I don't want you. Because to your point, right, the artists, let's assume they don't know what's going on. I want to I wanna give them the benefit of the yeah, doubt. Yeah, let's assume that. Right. Let's assume that. Now our goals conflict because I want to be as big as possible and bring as much attention to myself. But they're probably like, oh, you know, too much attention can be a bad thing in this situation because yeah. now if we start getting a lot of real fans, <laughs> Spotify has enough to go like, hmm, this shit ain't adding up. Like, you know what I'm the problem I have with what he's saying is record labels don't care about that either. Record labels don't care about making good or great music. They only care about the numbers, the analytics. You think record labels care about whether the plays are real or not? No, they just care about the money, man. The money. The money. It's all this is about, man, is the money. Saying like we have enough real metrics here to see that the rest of this shit is sus as fuck, right. and now the whole operation comes crashing down because you wanted to be a superstar. Because <laughs> you wanted to be a superstar. Because yeah, you wanted to be Swedish Drake. Uh, impact the world <laughs> and stuff. Change lives. Come on, man. So it's, it's like, like I could, I, I could get it. You know, I could understand yeah. and. I don't know, man. I, I, if the artists are aware, because you know, I know a lot of. Well, I don't say I know, but I've known of artists in the U.S. that were definitely aware. Yeah. That it was happening. You know, look at um, what's his name? G. Erbo is going through a, a not a similar situation, but a situation where he learned that, like, hey, my manager was doing some suspect things to help keep my career afloat, and then it's all come coming uh, crashing down on me. And my you know what the problem is though. It, it's even worse than that. As a music promoter, and I um, use like daily playlists to submit hub and things like that to uh, pitch the playlist. And, you know, I got contacts of playlisters and whatnot. You got random playlisters that out there that claim that they got these AI playlists. And it's like waiver AI and there's another one. And they claim they got these AI playlists that, and they say these playlists are cl playing at McDonald's and coffee shops and and um, like Foot Lockers. And, and the, the thing is, is I've never been into a McDonald's and ever heard anything played other than like satellite radio or something. You know, I've never been in a coffee shop and heard anything played other than satellite radio. I've never seen a independent playlist played so they randomly add the songs to the playlist and they're definitely bought it up and people will be on the playlist for like three or four days get a however many bot plays they get for three or four days and they take them off the playlist and get this basically trying to give them a little teaser like we're going to add them to the playlist they see a little bit of plays we take them off and if they want to get back on the playlist you got to click go to the website that's in the description and they lie about the website being an AI website saying it plays at McDonald's and all these places that it does it. And then you got to pay for a slot. So when you got people random, even randomly adding songs to playlists that are bots, what can you do? It's like, it's, it's almost impossible to avoid bots on Spotify when they're randomly adding play songs to a playlist. Um, if somebody like doesn't like you and wants to shut you down, they can literally buy a bunch of bots and run it to your song and sabotage it. People can sabotage you with bots if they wanted to. Sabotage your song, sabotage your playlist, you know. And that's why TikTok is the number one platform to me personally and because – it's the only platform that you can't buy every aspect. Like when you do a dance challenge, you can't buy an actual real person dancing to the song. You can't buy the actual TikTok challenges when real people are going in there and doing a challenge. You could buy every other aspect of every platform online to likes, the comments, the plays, the views, whatever, you know? So, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm not surprised gangs are laundering money through Spotify and using bots to do it when they could get a thousand plays for 
you know, 38, 48 cents. And sometimes these bots over deliver massively. Sometimes they massively over deliver and you're getting like, you know, you might pay for a thousand and they deliver like four or five thousand. So now you're getting four or five times what you're laundering. You know, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So um, once again, thank you for tuning in to Paul Pickett Podcast. And I'm out.